Amen. All right, these kids are going to give you a youth rally welcome. Y'all ready, fired up, prayed up, ready to go, ain't they? Amen. Hit the mic, y'all. Do the parts first. Parts first? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Doing the parts first? Yeah. Parts first. Here we go. Remember now the creator in the days that I use. For the evil days come not, nor the years drawn out. Thou shalt say I have no pleasure in them. If you hear discouraged your way down low, if you think that there's no place to go, if you're down or out or even backslid, you're going to hear preaching from a man named Phil Kidd. Jesus saves. This is Brother Jax. He's a deacon. He saves me. He's a deacon. Jesus loves you. A place to come, a place to play, only here for a while. We cannot stay. Take a warning from this little rhyme. Get right with God while there's still time. Welcome to Youth Valley, the best time of the year. We come from near, we come from fall. But most important of all, we want you to hear the message of Salvation Loud and Clear. You can run far away, but you can't hide. You can laugh and joke or even backslide. But there is one thing, there is no doubt. Be sure your sin will find you out. Voices are red, violets are blue. We want you to know we're praying for you. Welcome. Dear Lord, you've been so good to me for all I have and all I see. I'm thankful, Lord, especially today. We get to eat and we get to play. You've blessed me with a great family, a good mom and dad. It's easy to see. I'm thankful for Shining Light and my preacher. I'm thankful for Miss Carrie and all of my teachers. But most of all, I'm thankful for Jesus, who died on the tree, to make salvation possible for people Amen. like me. Amen.
this one here. Amen. Come on, Dak. All right, Dak's going to say something here. And uh, he's the one you've seen jumping in buses down there. And uh, Lordy mercy, you're getting big as me now. Uh, I remember when I was 12, I had a two... I had a two-wheel drive motorcycle. Like a four-wheel drive, too. I could do a wheelie backwards, go down the road like that. These little guys now, they ain't, they ain't nothing what we used to do. I actually did go backwards, but it wasn't on purpose. <laughs> I learned my lesson. I call him awful can awful. And I'm telling you, I thank the Lord for him. He, he won the national championship. His age group was two years ago, year before last. And that boy right over there beat him day, not long ago. Hey, there's the number two riders in America. Raise your hand over there, danger boy. Danger boy digging right there. And, and uh, uh, But I told him, I always told him, preacher, I said, tell him to thank the Lord Jesus Christ. And he does every time. You can't say thank God no more. Who in the world's that? Who, that could be anything nowadays. The Lord Jesus Christ. So I want him to say something. Amen. Hey guys, my name's Jackson Bennick and yes. I race dirt bikes and I just want to thank the Lord for saving me Amen. and giving me a good home and family yeah. and um, just want to tell you the most important thing is to be saved because everything falls into place after that. So, That's right. Yeah. Amen. Good job. All right. Amen. All right, kids, y'all go down. Y'all go down. Go ahead, brother. Amen. All right, a couple of things right quick going to get out of the way now. Um, I'll just stay up there. Uh, first of all, we'd like to give you a welcome. Any church, if you did not get one of these last night, ladies, uh, this tells us who you are, what church you came from. Uh, I want one representative from each church to stand up or raise your hand real high, real quick. Go ahead, ladies. Uh, and and uh, we probably had 50 churches represented here, maybe tonight. So if you didn't get one last night, even if there's just one in your group, be sure and get one of these. Fill it out, how, where you came from, how many miles you travel, and the, the group that come the furthest gets an all-expense trip to Hawaii paid for <laughs> or a free Pepsi up here. One of these... Valuable gifts could be yours. Now, so, so you don't forget that. Also, fill that out, and we're going to send you five letters a month begging for money. Make sure you send one of them. No, we're not going to do that. We don't do that. We don't, I don't do that. All right. Make sure you get one of those. Got one? Okay. All right. You know, we have a lot of important people come to youth rally. And youth is a fixing to see some of them. I got a good friend of mine. When I need prayer, she prays for me. When I need the touch of God, she prays it down. She's my friend and your friend and the Lord's friend. She's here somewhere. I thought I'd seen her. Where's she at? Granny. That's it, love. Hey y'all, how are ye? You just doing all right? Honey, I thought I was gonna miss this year. I was real worried about it. Preacher Danny called me up last week. He said, Granny, he said, you coming down here? He said, you know, we're having an annual youth rally. I said, Preacher Danny, I said, I'm a busy woman. He said, I got a plant at garden. He said, I'm gonna tell you what, Granny. He said, now I ain't gonna tell nobody else. He said, I got somebody famous coming. I said, oh, goodness. I said, well, tell me, son, I got one foot in the grave. I ain't got time to wait. And he said, you ain't going to believe it? He said, I got Dr. Phil. I said, Brother Danny, you know I don't watch that trash. I said, I ain't coming down there for Dr. Phil. He said, no, Granny. He said, Dr. Phil, kid. I said, woo, that's my favorite preacher. I wasn't going to miss this place for the world. Now, listen, I don't know if you know this or not, but the church I attend regularly, we actually split 
off SLBC. I don't, I don't announce that a lot. I love Pastor Danny, but we had a little dispute over the offering plates, and some of us just split on down to the other one. And so that's where I go. It's right next to my house down in the holler. And people say, Granny, they said, you go down there to that old redneck church. You know what I do? I give them the stink eye like this. I say, you call my church redneck? They said, we sure are. I said, well, let me tell you how you know if you go to Redneck Church. Preacher be up there preaching on them 5,000, feeding them people, you know, them two fishes. Somebody stand up in the back, and they want to know if it's bass or catfish and what in the world kind of bait did they use. Yeah. That's how you know if you go to Redneck Church. Now, I'm going to tell you this. This happened to me. True story. I ain't lying. I showed up church one Sunday morning. They wasn't nobody there. Thought the rapture happened. Had to question my salvation. Finally, somebody come up. They said, Granny, what you at church for? I said, it's Sunday. They said, well, it's the first day of deer season. You know, we canceled the service on Sunday for the first day of deer season. I said, well, somebody could have told me last week before I showed up with my clothes on. Let me tell you how else you know you go to a redneck church. When there's 300 people on the roll, but only four last names in the church directory. Yeah. <laughs> that church is a little too close-knit, if you know what I mean. That's when you go to Redneck Church. <laughs> now listen, let me tell you something. You know you go to Redneck Church if you're taking up an offering and then 57 Chevy hubcaps. That's why we split. We couldn't decide. I wanted them hubcaps. We had to let it go. We had to let it go. We got Sister Kelly in here. I need to tell her something. Sister Kelly, I need to let you know that you go to a redneck church if a pastor, Brother Danny here, and his wife drive matching pickup trucks. Yeah. Now listen, I got one more for you. Listen, I wouldn't believe this if I didn't hear it with my own ears. Parishioner come up to the preacher. He said, preacher, he said, I'm going to tell you I need a favor. He said, what you need? He said, I need you to bury me in my four-wheel drive truck. Preacher just looked at him and said, I ain't never been a hole she couldn't get out of. I don't guess he's ready to go. That's okay, though. I, I, I don't want to sound proud here, but I'm going to tell y'all something. I just got my doctorate in some theologianism. I just graduated. I didn't tell you that, Preacher Danny, but I'm, I'm good now. And I was hoping if it's okay with you, I want to ask these kids if they got any doctrinal questions because Granny got to answer. I'm theologian. I was hoping there might be one little smart kid in here that might have a question because I got to answer for everything. Any of you kids got a question? Anybody? Woo! Well, we, got, we got a wild one here. We got a wild one. Granny, I got a question. Okay, let's hear it, son. All right. I've been, okay. I've been everywhere. I've been around America. All right. I went to Bible college. Woo! I, all the pastors have ever okay. met. I ain't found the answer. I got it. I got the answer. Smoking going to send me to hell. Smoking going to send you straight to hell, bless God. <laughs> Anybody burn something taste that good or to go to hell? <laughs> Listen, I'm just kidding with son. Look at me. I'm just teasing you. I'm just kidding you. Smell like you've been to hell and back. Don't you be smoking now. That body's the holy temple if you say it. Belongs to the Lord. You've got to take care of that thing, son. Well, Preacher Danny, I got time for one more if you let me. Well, I ain't one more. I'm a theologian. I got answers, answers, answers to every question you got. I graduated. Woo! Whoa! Hello! What? Can't stand a word that man say. Hell is a hot place. Only Jesus can save you. What in the tarnation are you saying, son? I can't understand the words you Yankees up there talking. Slow it down a notch so I can understand the words that are coming out of your mouth, son. Abuelita, all I want to know, are they going to build the wall and who's going to come up with the dinero to pay listen, for it? Listen, <laughs> listen, honey, don't you be bringing them politics up in the pulpit. Our hope ain't in the White House. Our hope is in the church house. Our hope ain't in them Democrats and Republicans. Our hope is in Jesus Christ our Lord. And don't y'all forget that, kids. That's our only hope. We're not going to find it anywhere else. I want to thank Preacher Danny for having me. Lord willing, the creek don't rise. I'll be back next year. But I love all y'all, and I hope to see y'all real soon. All right, Brother 
Pastor Danny over here gave me the privilege to introduce to y'all the new contemporary SLBC praise and worship team. Give it up for them. All right, you're going to love these people. They're up to the newest. They know all the new stuff, contemporary. But they're going to start out with an old one by Brother Hank Williams. Y'all ready? All right, go ahead now. I lost my job last Monday at noon Got my blue tick and I hunted that coon But the good Lord let me hit a possum last night Praise the Lord, I saw a light I was a fool before I got right Now I will serve him with all of my mind I'll even go to church on Wednesday To party and listen to rap. Now I know it's a big load of. God, now I have gospel on my device. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was addicted to all of them games. Spent all my time, it was a crying shame. Now I slacked off even on Fortnite. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Sing it now. I saw the light, I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I threw my beer out without a taste. Pulled up my breeches up to my waist. Pulled out the earrings on that first night. Hey, praise the Lord, I saw the light. Addicted to rock and roll, but it comes straight from the devil's stole it bowl. And I found out that Phil Kid was right. But praise the Lord, I saw the light. Let's sing it now. I saw the light, I saw the light No more in darkness, no more in night Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside Praise the Lord, I saw the light Well, I went to church and I got confused I didn't know which Bible to use Then Jesus showed me the King James was right Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I won't be kissing on Susan or Jill. Hey, I won't hold hands with Johnny or Bill. But I ain't a hater. And I ain't no sodomite. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in Listen, y'all wonder what I, that's the kind of songs my kids grew up on. <laughs> Scriptural songs out of the old red book. Written by Fanny Crosby right before she crossed over the river. All right, amen, y'all go ahead, amen. All right. All right, let's give them a big hand. That's our praise and worship team. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Anybody all be ashamed. 
How such stuff is that in church? Who wrote that? My family writes songs. I got cousins in West Virginia that write songs. I got one cousin in Nashville that writes country songs for real. But he ain't wrote one that good. All right. We're going to do something else now tonight. This is Saturday night. This tonight we've been waiting for. There's like a thousand chairs in here tonight and there's people standing around the walls and people outside. I'm telling you, there's a mob of people here. We got them here and now you know what they need. They need Jesus. They need Jesus, people. The only hope this world's got is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. So, a couple things right quick. The choir's gonna sing. Let's enjoy the Lord tonight. Get a big blessing. Get help from the Lord. Come on, choir, let's sing one right quick. Amen. Shine like choir. Everybody, hurry, bring somebody with you. Amen, let's go. Amen. tonight I'm going to sing you a song we've been working on really bothers me that our generation of Christians don't write or speak scripturally you know what that means somebody read the Bible these new songs that come out they don't have a lot of Bible in them you got to watch them 7 11 you know and they always talk about well he began his journey of faith and he began his one. You know what you need to talk about? I got saved. I got saved. That's the scriptural language. So this song says, I got saved. I know what happened to me that night. Amen. It could happen to you tonight. You know what happened to me? I got saved. Hey, I got saved. All right, let's sing it tonight. Amen.
deacons here. Come here, Austin. Oh, he's over there. I want him to step out there and tell you what we believe. I hate to go to a church and don't know what they are. So he's going to tell you what we are tonight and what we believe. All right. All right, ready? Oh, wrong one. Wrong boy. We, we done graduated that song down to this boy here. This boy right here done took over that song. Ain't you right? And he's ready to sing it. Amen. Amen. First time I seen him, I thought, is he gonna sing it? A, B, C, easy as one, two, three. <laughs> no, this is not Michael Jackson when he was little. And he ain't gonna turn out to be no pervert like he did. Amen. All right, here we go. He's gonna tell you what we believe. Go ahead now. I believe there's a man named Jonah who lived in belly of a whale I believe there's a beautiful heaven I believe there's a burning hell You'll remain standing. Remain standing now. We're going to do something different for the offering tonight. Y'all can be coming on. Everybody remain standing. Lord in mercy, we're going to have a ride in here before it's over with. That praise and worship team. 
All right, we're going to do something different for the offering tonight. Look, y'all. Everybody give me attention, please. Back there. Hey. Tonight, we're going to receive an offering. Our church rents this whole place. We do all of this, give these kids food. They're very expensive. It's not a money-making venture at all. We lose money by the thousands, seriously. So if you want to help us, that would really be appreciated. A couple of people that watch me on YouTube all the time have sent money, and I thank God for that. And um, um, so if you can do something special tonight, I'm going to have these preachers, or these folks here, come way up in the mountains. I appreciate the Edwards family being here. And um, if you could do that, something for us tonight, that would really be a blessing, okay? Something special. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for all you've done for us. Pray now you might bless this offering tonight. Dear God, do what ought to be done. Holy Ghost, come in this place tonight. Oh God, we're asking for a miracle. Lord, there's no way that any man can, can do what needs to be done here tonight. It's got to be you. Lord, I'll never forget that night I walked in to a church service. It wasn't like this, but you were there. God, I pray that this will be that night for many, many boys and girls, mamas and daddies. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. You give. Thanks for loving me. You have set my spirit free. I'm not one. was heavy and no one seemed to care. My life was full of misery that no one else would share. My spirit was in prison. I could not find a key. But you opened up my life by loving me. Oh, thanks for loving me. You have set my spirit free. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thanks for loving me. You have set my spirit free. I'm not what I used to be. Oh, thank you, Lord, for loving me. I'm not what struggles within me there have been times I've strayed away even times I could not pray but somehow my faith would say just hold on there's a brighter day he never gave up he never gave up mercy reached out and that was see who I was before, then I'm sure that you'll agree, he never once ever gave up on me. If your back's against the wall, and you feel all hope is gone, have you often asked yourself, is there a reason to go on? But he looks beyond my 
guilty stains His mercy takes the blame So forget about your past Just praise the Lord, you're free at last He never gave up He never gave up Mercy reached down And that was enough If you could see who I was before and I'm sure that you'll agree He never once ever gave up on me If you could see who I was before Then I'm sure that you'll agree He never once ever gave up on me If you could see who I was before Then I'm sure that you'll agree Word will stand against the raging tides of those who criticize and work their evil plans. God's word will stand against the gates of hell with power to prevail in the hearts of men. God's word will stand. They can take him from. The courthouse walls remove him from the schools. Teach our children that we're animals. Speak against the golden rule. Try to hide our Christian heritage from the public eye. But they'll never overcome God's word, no matter how they try. God's word will stand against the raging tide. Those who criticize and work their evil plans, God's word will stand against the gates of hell with power to prevail in the hearts of men. God's word will stand. Listen. It is forever settled to evermore endure. It's the only sinner's heart could ever be made pure. God's word will stand against the gates of time of those who criticize and work their evil plans. God's word will stand against the gates of hell with power to prevail in the hearts of Boy, that good singing, say amen right there. All right. Now, before the preacher comes, two things. Uh, I want, first of all, all the preachers, if you're called to preach, whether you're pastoring or not, I want you to stand up right quick. Uh, we're not going to take time for all of you. All you preachers, stand right quick. Uh, Lord, I thought I felt a hindering spirit in here tonight. There's enough preachers in here to kill any good revival. They're the ones that usually kill it. But I thank God for all you men here tonight. Bunch of preacher friends from all across the country. They're from Florida all the way to New York City. All right, you can be seated. Eugene's gonna be with us in the morning, ain't you, Eugene? Y'all heard him up here, the man in black. Could you understand what he's saying? I couldn't either. I agreed with it, though. 
Brian, where are you at? Come up here just a second. Uh, tonight, one of the men was down there, Brian Deegan. Uh, where's he at? Back there? Okay, come up here just a second, brother. He didn't know I was going to get him up here in front of everybody. There he is. Brian was just happened to be visiting Todd and Carrie this weekend and got to come. Brian, uh, they just did a documentary of him on NBC. And he saved, got saved by the grace of God. And he was the first person in the world, I reckon, to do a backflip on a motorcycle, right? And a 360. So you gotta be, there's something wrong with you up here if you do that. <laughs> Amen. So I'm gonna take just a second and tell you kids. Kids, listen. Listen to this. Hey, how are you all tonight? Good? All right, so we're uh, out here because of the Bennicks, and we met through motocross, and it's uh, I mean, just an awesome family to link up with. Our kids play together, growing up together, and it's, uh, it's cool to... I'm from California, but I grew up in Nebraska, so I grew up around family and, and understanding, uh, you know, I went to church and went to California and, you know, got, got off track. It's went out there, it's a different lifestyle, and, you know, it's uh, a lot of distractions, and what you see, it's, it, it, it's that bad, if, if not worse, out there, and, and uh, but, you know, getting off track through, through the sports of freestyle motocross, and getting in the limelight, and everything that was thrown at me, and, and uh, then, you know, had a bad injury, a crash, lost my kidney, my spleen, it was a near-death experience, and I just remember praying because the doctors were telling me that they weren't going to be able to save me. And I just remember praying before I went under in surgery. I said, God, if you're real, you know, please just save me. Keep me, you know, keep me alive. And just realize how important life was at that point. And everything before that that I thought was important wasn't important. And then, uh, you know, I, 12 hours of surgery, woke up tubes everywhere and I just remember looking up and my and my wife was there at the uh woke up and and I just remember going thank you God I was, I was alive and I made that pact to change and and follow follow uh, Jesus and and it was it's it's not uh, honestly living in California it's not easy there's a, a ton of sin surrounded by everything in the news and the media and and you got to think it says you know the word of God is is the truth and it's going to stand. And, and through all these things that have changed, and it says in the Bible, you know, when it, there's going to come a time where what, what's right will look like it's, it's wrong, and what's wrong will look like it's right. And that's what California is, you know, right now. But there's still good people that are fighting the fight. And, and uh, you know, every chance I can get, I just want to represent and, and say that, you know, through Jesus Christ, it's been a life changer. And, and for kids... Don't, don't follow this, that shiny, the Hollywood thing that you see in the media and all that. It's, it's just all false. It's fake. And so I'm saying what you guys have here is awesome. So th thanks for having me. God bless you. Brother. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for bringing Listen, you know what the Bible says? Can any good thing come out of California? That's in my version that I'm going to write pretty soon. Uh, I wanted you to hear that because you kids, like, I hated to drag y'all through what I did last night. I felt sorry for you, what I showed here last night. But it got the job done, and there was people's eyes open. And tonight, I want everybody, you sit real still. I don't want nobody to move. If you hear a little voice saying, you know what, it's hot in here. Why don't you go outside? That ain't the Lord telling you that. The part that, see, the devil tells you half truth, it is hot, but you don't need to go out. If you die from heat sitting in here, I'll preach your funeral free. Amen. Can't beat that, can you? No, you'll be all right. It ain't going to kill you. We have here tonight, in my opinion, uh, uh, one of the greatest preachers I've ever heard in my life. And I've heard them all. I've heard them all. Uh, I never thought I'd have the day of getting to introduce this man. I've been. Friends at a distance for 35 years. We preached together when I was just about 23, two or three. He's about 18. And uh, I thank God for his story. He's going to tell you his life story. Some of these people are here. 
and I have the privilege to introduce Dr. Phil Kidd. Get him up loud, y'all. Sure. Thank you, Brother Castle. I made a pack with some of the young people here tonight. I'm a mixed martial arts fighter. And I told the young people that if they would set up and pay attention, I would show them how to destroy somebody in seven seconds after service. Would you mind if I did that tonight, brother? Who's running the PA? Is anybody running the PA at all? Okay, good. Thank you, brother. I got a little bit of ringing. So if you'll give me your undivided attention, I'll teach you how to end a fight probably in about seven seconds. So we'll meet up here on the platform, everybody that wants to fight, and um, we'll go through it. I need somebody to uh, volunteer to let me stomp them tonight. <laughs> I, I want that, that, yeah, I want you. Uh, what's your name? Malik. Who? Lee? Malik. Malik. All right, Malik, we're going to take care of you after service. So. <laughs> hope your mama can identify you by your fingerprints because I'm going to mess you up. <laughs> well, it's a joy to be here. I learned one thing tonight. Not everybody uses deodorant. I can tell you that much. I... <laughs> and not everybody uses breath mints either. There was a, <coughs> there was a guy coming up to me outside, got right in my face and said, hey, and he just need a hot dog full of onions. He said, you remember me? I said, not the name, but I remember that breath. I'll never forget your breath. Pastor Castle, thank you for letting me come. Thank you for the sacrifices at Shining Light Baptist Church and many of you have went through. Let's give them a hand to let them know how much we appreciate all that they've done tonight. I want to thank all of you preachers and youth groups for coming so far and encouraging me. I want to thank all you workers that have worked so hard to put this together, all of the cooks. I know what goes into a meeting like this. We don't take it lightly. Before I was saved, I've been drunk. I mean, real drunk. I've smoked enough pot at one time to think I could fly. But I've never got on a motorcycle drunk or high and ever tried to jump six school buses in my life. <laughs> and these fellows are sober when they're doing it. And I appreciate you men. You did a great job tonight. I want to give you my life verse, my testimony real quick, and I'll be leaving. Psalm chapter 34, if you'll turn there. I want to read one verse of scripture. Psalm chapter 34, when I got born again, my aunt told me I needed to read the Bible. And the first time I ever read this verse, the Holy Spirit of God spoke to my heart and said, this will be your verse for your whole life. Psalm chapter number 34 and verse number 6. Please, may I say, if you have anything other than a King James Bible, would you please close it at this time? It puts off a foul odor in the house of God, and we would just appreciate if you'd use the right Bible. Psalm 34, 6. This poor man cried. And the Lord heard him. And I like this terminology. And saved him out of all his troubles. I was raised in a large ghetto with four million people living in, living in the immediate surroundings of Cleveland, Ohio. My daddy was a heavy drinker. I lived next door to a beer joint all of my life. All I ever knew was fussing and fighting and cussing. And the last thing I knew anything about was God or the Bible. My daddy drank a lot, but he worked hard. My sister, my oldest one, was 21 years older than me, and she was a barmaid in a nearby bar. She died at the age of 38 because of liquor. My brother-in-law killed himself at the age of 42 because of liquor. And my grandfather, hauling moonshine, somebody stole a load of his moonshine from his house. And in a drunken stupor, he crossed over from Alabama into Mississippi and killed a house full of men, women, and children. He went home that night in a drunken stupor and killed my grandmother and left a seven-day-old baby between her cold, stiff arms in the floor. So that's the kind of home I came up in. I remember one night when I was 10 years old, my sister came to me and said, how would you like to make some money? Living in the ghetto and being broke, that was a great opportunity at the age of 10. So I went to the beer joint where my sister was employed. There was a barmaid, and they had eight lanes of bowling, but you had to set the pins up by hand from behind the wall. 
And at the age of 10, I got my first job working at a beer joint. The highlight of my day would come at 2.30 in the morning on Friday and Saturdays when the joints would close down. My sister would nail the chairs back together that they broke and glue the felt back on the pool tables. And while she was doing that, I would go out in the alleyway where they would put the empty bottles back in those thick cardboard cases and I would suck all the foam out of those empty beer bottles. For the first time in my life at the age of 10 in the back alley all by myself, dark on a Friday night, I got drunk. From the age of 10 to the age of 12, I worked in B&R Lounge setting up bowling pins. At the age of 12, a larger bar that was closer to where I lived wanted to hire me to cook pizzas for drunk. And by the way, if you've ever ate my pizza, you would understand you would have to be a sot drunk to eat what I was cooking coming out of that oven. And I started working there at the age of 12. No God, no Bible, no church. I remember one night thinking to myself, surely there's got to be more to life than getting drunk. I'd already had my first tattoo at the age of 10. And I thought there's got to be more to life than what I'm getting out of it. I remember one night as, 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 over a 25 cent game of pool, four men fell out on the front porch of that beer joint and began to fight. And as a 12 year old boy, I watched the man take a pool stick and gouge a man's eye out of his head. I remember as it plunged through his eye and the fluid ran down the side of his face, I remember hearing a man scream like I had never heard before and I really haven't ever heard since. But that night, walking home through that ghetto at 2.30 in the morning by myself, I looked up in the star-quilted sky and said, there's got to be more to life than this. If somebody would have loved me enough to drove a bus by my house, if somebody would have loved me enough to knock on my door in a big, nasty, dirty ghetto, I may not have the testimony that I'm giving tonight. When I was 13 years old, I started home one day and a man that lived close to me named Mickey met me in the street. He said, have you ever smoked pot? I said, no, but I heard about it. I bought my first bag of pot that night and went home and in my daddy's basement while they slept upstairs drunk, I started smoking marijuana. By the time I was 14, what I wanted and what I needed was more than I was making on weekends working at a bar. So I began to do what every stupid dope addict does. I began to sell it and deliver it to make enough money to pay for my own habits. I remember as a 14-year-old boy walking through a ghetto with a roll of $100 bills that would choke a horse. Of course, it wasn't mine. It was simply a payoff from making deliveries. You see, marijuana is not where it start, stops. It's where it starts. After a while, they want to introduce you to something a little better than that. Back then, LSD and clear window pane and liquid hash was coming out on the scene. You'd buy it by the gram, and it wasn't long until I was needing money here and money there. And before I was ever 15 years old, my life was totally out of control. I remember many nights I never had a bed till I was 15. I slept in the floor on a quilt, all of us in this little old shotgun house. I remember laying in the floor a lot of nights thinking, my God, what am I doing with my life? But nobody ever loved enough to take a Bible and show me from the word of God how to be saved. I had no earthly idea that we were dealing with some drug dealers out of New York that was trafficking heavy stuff down the coast. I just thought I was dealing with the local man. One night in a bad situation that I couldn't get out of at the age of 15 years old, a drug deal went bad. I had to run off and leave $3,000 worth of drugs laying on a coffee table. That's probably equivalent to fifty-five dollars to $60,000 today. I had to leave it or get shot. And I remember leaving that place and I remember lead flying and women screaming and crying and reading the papers the next day of those that had gotten shot that I'd known. But little did I know who I was dealing with until they began to come to the school I was going to. They tried to find me. My daddy actually had to make me sleep under his bed at night for fear that they would break into his house and kill me in the middle of the night. It was then that I realized I was more than a sinner. I realized my life was totally out of control. Several months went by and things died down and I thought everybody kind of forgot about what had happened and I was trying my best to raise the money to get everything paid back and some of my best friends supposedly came by and said, hey, Phil, we're having a party up the road, man. They want you to be one of the guests. Everything's calmed down. There's nothing going on on the streets now. Why don't you come on up? You've been kind of hiding the last couple of months. So with some of what I thought was my best buddies, I went to a party and for the first time in three months, I went outside. But I didn't take but two or three drinks of that drink they gave me that night and I realized they'd put something inside of that drink. The room began to spin round and round and upside down and I remember falling from that old nasty couch that I was sitting on to that stiff, nasty carpeted floor and that's the last thing I remember. 
Five men that were supposed to be my best friends had been paid off from some hit men out of New York to kill me. They took me to a little old field not far from where my daddy lived. There was a set of railroad tracks there. They ripped the clothes off of my body. They pulled both of my legs and both of my arms out of socket. They almost beat my face off of my skull, twisted me and snapped me and broke me and took my naked body and laid me upon a set of railroad tracks. They laid me on the third set of railroad tracks and somebody asked me when I gave my testimony, why did they waste the time to put you on the third row? Because they knew that night within an hour a train was scheduled to come down that metal rail and would have splattered my guts and I'd have went to hell immediately. My nephew was having a party down the railroad tracks in a place called Rabbit Valley and him and some boys staggering drunk come up on my dead, bloody, naked body laying there on a set of railroad tracks. A 15-year-old kid. I didn't know it. I was completely passed out, but they found an old place where a drunk was sleeping up under a tree and they found a sheet and they took two sticks and made a hammock out of it and put my naked bloody body on that hammock and carried me home. I was out. I was unconscious. All I know is what they told me. They knocked on the front door and my mama opened the door and said, my God, is that my baby? The blood was dripping through the sheets where they had beaten me. My face was bloody and purple, almost nigh unto dying. And they took my nasty, bloody body inside the house. And out of everybody that could have been sitting in that living room that night, there was Uncle Buford and Aunt Florine. Now, I didn't fool with Uncle Buford and Aunt Florine. Daddy told me they had mental issues. I wish you could meet them. They're dead now. Uncle Buford was about the size of this microphone stand right here. And that was on a good day. Aunt Florine was much wider than this pulpit. And when they would come to our house, we would make fun of them and say, yeah, Laurel and Hardy's here again, and they'd get out of their car. And as they would make their way to my house, Daddy would say, son, go out the back door and get out of here. I'd say, Daddy, what's wrong with them? He said, they got religion, son. They got religion. He said, religion will drive you crazy. He said, my great aunt read the Bible one time and spent the rest of her, mi- rest of her life in a mental ward out of her mind. But you know, Dad was right. Religion will drive you crazy, but Jesus will put you in your right mind. Just about the time I thought life could not get worse, mine did. What I did not know was Aunt Florine and Uncle Buford saw my messed up life that night, and while Dad rushed me to the emergency room, they went home, born again, saved people, and got a burden for Phil Kidd. I didn't know it, but every morning and every night before they would eat breakfast and before they would eat supper, they would push their chairs out and get on their knees in front of their living room table and ask God to save me. And the more they prayed, the worse I got. Every day they would pray for me. Uncle Buford and Aunt Florine prayed for me and I got shot. Uncle Buford and Aunt Florine prayed for me and I got stabbed. Uncle Buford and Aunt Florine prayed for me and I overdosed twice. Uncle Buford and Aunt Florine prayed for me and I had to go three trips to a dry out clinic. They kept praying for me. I went three trips to a mental ward. I'll never forget, Aunt Florine told me after I got saved, she said one day they knelt down to pray and she said Buford looked at her and said, Honey, I don't know if this is working or not. It seems like the more we pray, the worse that boy's getting. And she leaned over and said, Buford, don't you see what God's are doing? He's a letting him go low so he can lift him up on high. Thank God for a praying aunt that never gave up on me. Me and five other boys were walking through an alley. This made the papers and almost locked me up the rest of my life. We were walking through an alley after they had been praying for me and my daddy had given me a 32 Colt 8-shot automatic pistol. He said, son, don't ever pull it, but if you have to pull it, don't be afraid to use it. I remember the six of us were walking through that alley that night. I remember a station wagon pulled up at the end of the alley and the windows went down together and three rifles came out the side of that station wagon and I knew they'd been sent to kill us. I remember my pistol and I grabbed it out of my pocket and I fired all eight shots into the side of that car. Those rifles began to go off and I could hear the bullets whizzing by my head. Wing! Daddy always told me if you could hear the bullet going by, that means it missed you because the bullet travels faster than sound. And I remember them bullets whizzing by my body and all of us diving in another direction. But for now, my life was about to be changed forever. 
I remember running past the fence to jump into some bushes to hide. And a little innocent girl that was coming to get her ball that had bounced over the fence stepped out of that gate. An angel ran across that alley with her hand out looking for that ball. And I heard that thud. And when I heard that thud, I spun around as I was jumping through those bushes and I watched that beautiful little 10-year-old blonde-haired girl as her, head turn, her hair turned to crimson red and she fell and she died. I remember running home and my dad had been drinking that night and I sat him down and I said, Daddy, there's been a shootout and I unloaded in the side of a car and, and Daddy, a little girl came out of the backyard and she took a bullet and Daddy, I watched her hair turn red and I think she's dead. It wasn't long till it was plastered all over the news if anybody had information leading to the death of a little girl that had been shot in an alley while playing ball. Nobody had known the story at the time. I remember going to her funeral. I remember passing by a little low pink casket of a 10-year-old girl. And her mother had some kind of crippling disease and she was in a wheelchair even though she was a young lady and she was patting her little daughter on the hand saying, this is my angel. This is my angel. And I was standing there looking at that little pink casket and the thought came to me, this ain't right. The innocent died for the ungodly. You should have died. You should have been shot. You ought to be laid out in a casket. It ain't right. The innocent dying for the ungodly. I found out who had pulled the trigger and me and several friends two days later went to the house and burned it down with him and his wife both in it asleep. Both of them escaped with some damages to their bodies and the house burnt to ashes. I was arrested, child, charges were filed against me and two other brothers that had helped me burn the house down. But I couldn't get away from that little girl. I remember going to the mental ward and Dr. Lyons was my psychologist. I remember we would sit across the table from each other and he said, Phil, what do you want from me? And I remember leaning across the table and grabbing the lapels of his suit and I said, I want forgiven. I'm so messed up. Can somebody forgive me? I just need to get this off of me. I live with the guilt and the shame of the mess my life is in. Please get me out of this mess. They sent me to a mental ward. Now you think I'm crazy. You need to visit a mental ward. Son, they hooked me up with a dude named Mark Green. You have to share a room. So we went in there and sat down and they got these little sessions where you sit in a circle and tell everybody what you want to do when you get out. Well, I, I knew what to say because all my friends had been there. I wanted to be a policeman and a fireman and wanted to be a contributor to the society. I knew what to say. And Mark was sitting next to me and he said, when I get out of here, I want to be a rooster. I said, you want to be a what? He said, I, 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 I want to be a rooster. I said, Mark, roosters don't get out of here. And can you believe they put my bed in the room with that dude? Now look, him perching on the bed all night, that's his business. I ain't got no problem with that. But that crowing at six o'clock in the morning got on my nerves. So they gave us Thorazine at night to knock us out because we was crazy. I'd give him mine too so he'd sleep in. You ever hear a drunk rooster at one o'clock in the afternoon trying to crow? Three tours to a mental ward. No relief. Three tours through dry out clinics. I remember the first time I came out dry and clean. I remember I went home and I told my mom, I said, I'm dry, I'm clean. I got my little chips. I finished all the classes. And before the sun rose the next day, I was back in the dark alley in my own vomit. You talking about one screwed up kid. No God, no Bible, no nothing. I get stabbed. A man stabbed me in, in a gang fight, and I forgave him. I got no hard feelings. I stabbed him back, but we're buddies to this day. And uh, I love, he's my friend, I, but I cut him like a hog, man. You cut me, I'll rake you in half. I cut him with an old hawk bill knife. You remember them? I cut him like a, like a hog. And I'm laying in the emergency room, and blood's everywhere, and they took snow and stuffed it in the incision. And I remember the next day, the doctor said, another quarter inch, son, you'd have bled to death and died right there in the snow. We was in a big gang fight, and they knew I got cut, and they were stuffing snow down in that incision until they come and rescued me and took me to the emergency room that night. 
There I am laid in the emergency room, half slick, half open, just about nigh in the death. And I look and over in the corner of my head, falls to the left, and I look, and I said, man, this medicine's so strong, that looks like Buford and Florine standing over there. And that Florine come up to my bed and said, they're getting ready to take you into surgery, but we're praying for you. I said, look, I've been with roosters. I, I've, I've been to dry out clinics. I've been to shootouts. But you're the craziest folk I ever met in my life. <laughs> now I want to take you to November 21st, 1975. It's a little before 7 o'clock. Everybody's out, gone, doing their own thing on a Friday night. I took the pistol out that my daddy gave me when I was a 15-year-old boy. I was facing 50 years in Ohio State Penitentiary. They were going to try me as an adult, put me in an adult prison for 50 years of my life. And I remember sitting in the living room that night by myself. Nobody was there but me. You understand, I've never read a verse of scripture. I don't even know what church is. I've never darkened the door of a church. That's for old folk. I ain't going to no church. And I cocked that pistol and I said, I'm not pulling 50 years. I am not living 50 years behind a metal door. And I said, I'm just going to kill myself. I remember from that moment when I said that, it's almost like my life went into slow motion and it's hard to explain. But I remember loading that gun and hearing that click as that bullet went up into that chamber. And on a Colt automatic, you've got to squeeze the handle and the trigger. It's a safety feature. I remember putting that gun up against the side of my head. Everything got quiet. Slow motion. The phone starts ringing. <laughs> and, 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 and it so startled me that I threw the gun and it hit the wall and landed over there in the corner. And this is way back before cell phones. And I grabbed the phone and I said, hey, Hello! It's Aunt Florine. I said, Aunt Florine, there's nobody here but me, and I'm, I'm busy doing something. I got to go. She said, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. She said, you're why I'm calling. I said, what, what do you mean I'm why you're calling? She said, Buford and I are going to revival tonight at church. Well, I didn't know what revival was. I'm from the ghetto. You go to church to play bingo. So I thought revival was bingo. I didn't know. And I said, well, I hope you win. That's what, I didn't know what else to say. God bless you, I'm praying for you. Hope you win. She said, no, no, I'm talking about revival. I said, oh, Florian, I don't even know what a revival is. She said, Phil, you listen to me now. She said, Buford and I are on the way out the door to get in our car to go to revival. I went to shut the door and lock it, and the Holy Ghost said, you need to call Phil and invite him to church. And the Holy Ghost said, had she not dialed your number, I'd have blown my brains out. And I'd already been in hell for 42 years. I looked at that pistol laying up against that wall. And I said, but Aunt Florine, I don't have any church clothes. I've never been to church. I don't even have a Bible. I don't even know, I don't even know how you act in church. She said, come as you are. We'll come by and pick you up. Whoa, was that a mistake? She got in the car. And she looked at Buford and said, Buford, he's a real any man. Worst mistake I ever made was getting in a Christian's car and I'm a dope addict. There's no roach clips hanging off the mirrors. They're playing music like I'd never heard. Everybody sounded like chickens on steroids. and They're all talking about God and they're in a good mood and they're sober and they're laughing. That's the longest journey I ever took in my life was trying to stay straight in a Christian car and here I am a dope head. We got to church that night. My God, there's 300 people there that night. Everybody saved but me. I walked in the back of that church. You understand, sir? I don't know what a church song is. I don't even know what you're talking about. Song director gets up there and says, let's everybody stand to your feet. He starts hopping around like a turkey having a seizure all over the platform. And they're singing Amazing Grace. I'd never heard that song before. And he's waving his hands and jumping all over. And, 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 and the men are going, Woo! And my aunt's standing there crying. And I leaned over. I said, I am flooring. You hear me now. He ain't the best singer I ever heard, but... Don't cry, it'll be over in a minute. 
he, 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 he'll run out of gas somewhere down the road. He can't jump like that all night. That's how dumb I was. They introduced an old bald-headed preacher. They had to help him to the pulpit. I said, dear God, I'm at a nursing home. <laughs> Two guys get this old bald-headed man. He didn't stand this tall. He had a hunchback and he grabbed the pulpit and he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Yeah. I thought he was complaining. I didn't know what he was talking about. I, thought, I felt like saying, shut up, old man. None of us will feel good all the time. And that old man preached on hell for 30 minutes. Hung me out over hell. You could hear people weeping for their families all over that altar. He said, you're gonna fry in hell. You're gonna burn in hell. You're gonna die without God. You'll suffer in a bottomless pit where the sun never shines and the birds never sing and the presence of God is never found and a prayer is never heard. I'm talking about a place where atheists become believers, condemned sinners get a burden for their family. I'm talking about a place where you'll never find God, you'll never find a baby, and you'll never find an altar of prayer. And then after he told me to go to hell for 30 solid minutes, they passed the offering plate. Now I'm on the back row. I'm taking all this eggs. I ain't never been through nothing like that. That offering plate gets to me and money's falling out of it. I mean, it just, it's, just, it's, just, it's an ocean of money. I leaned over to Aunt Florine. I said, let me tell you something, Aunt Florine. I've been to three men awards. I've lived 30 days with a man that thinks he's a rooster. This is the craziest place I've ever been. Man tell you to go to hell and you pay him to do it? Craziest place I ever been in my life. Man tell me to go to hell, I shoot him. That's how dumb I was. They helped the old goat down to the front after service. He's exhausted. Hyperventilating, they get him down front. Well, they, there was a line of people there. Well, I thought they were coming to complain. So I got in line with them. So bless God, there's something I want to say to that old man too. I didn't know anything about shaking hands and signing Bibles. I don't know what I'm doing. So I wait in line. Finally, I walk up to the old man. I say, hey, old goat, I want to ask you a question. When did God die and leave you in charge of everything? How do you know I'm going to hell? You're probably going to hell with me. You're just as crazy as I am. And I started to walk away. And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, what? He said, are you a junkie? I said, yeah, I am. He said, I was too until I got saved. And he turned and walked away. I'll never forget going home that night. I got away from the preacher. I got away from church. I got away from my aunt and uncle. But somebody gave the Holy Ghost my address that night. Somebody told him where I lived. I had, an old, I had a trunk full of drugs that I had to deliver to Tommy and Ronnie that night. And I called them on the phone. I said, look, fellas, come get the drugs. Put the money under the seat. I don't feel good. He said, what's wrong with you? I said, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. But I'm telling you, I'm one sick dude, man. I'd started working in the funeral home. And I remember picking up bodies morning, noon, and night. And I laid down. And I, all I could hear was that old preacher say, you're going to hell. You're going to die without God, young man. You're going to go straight to hell when you die. All night long, I could hear that man say that in my head. And I, and I said, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to turn the light out and go to sleep. And about the time I rolled over to go to sleep, the thought went through my mind. You know how many people die in their sleep? I said, that ain't happening. Bless God, if I go to hell, I'm going with my eyes wide open. I ain't going to sleep for nobody. And I sat up in my bed all night. I didn't think the sun would ever break the midnight sky, but I remember calling Florine on the phone. And she answered the phone and said, hello. I said, shut up! I said, now you hear me and don't say another word. That old man, I said some mean stuff to him last night about going to hell and all that stuff, the old hunchback boy, that fella. He, he, he'll be dead before long, and I want to go back and, I don't know, for some dumb reason, I, I want to hear him again. But I bring him my own car. I ain't riding in your car. I like roach clips, rock music, smoke a joint or two. I'm bringing my own pad. So I met him at church. I walked in the back of that building. My hair was in a ponytail. I had on a dirty T-shirt, 36-inch bell-bottom blue jeans, four-inch white platform shoes, and already tattoos all up around my body. That's what I was that night. They introduced the old man, and sure enough, two people got him. They dragging him up to the pulpit. 
And I'm thinking you think they could get somebody under 90 to hold a revival. And he grabbed that pulpit and this is what he said. You got to remember that all night long, all I can hear is you're going to go to hell. You're going to go to hell. And he grabbed that pulpit and he said, ladies and gentlemen, for some reason, God wants me to preach on hell again tonight. I said, you, you, you got to be clear. Are you kidding me? I said, Aunt Florine, that's called dementia. The man has, all he can do is tell people to go to hell. Put him in a nursing home. I'll pay for his bedpan and hearing aid. Get that guy out of the pulpit. All he says is go to hell and you pay him to do it. I didn't know nothing about an invitation. All I know is I walked out of a mental ward with my daddy and they begged him to sign me away. First time I ever saw my daddy cry in my life. He said, Mr. Kid, sign on the dotted line. We'll put him away till he's 21. My daddy broke down weeping, Brother Butler, and said, I can't do it. But he said, Mr. Kid, let me tell you something about your son. That boy's so wild and he's so crazy. One of these days, he's going to snap just like that. And he said, just like that, he's going to snap. He'll never be the same. Right in the middle of that old man preaching on hell, he leaned over the pulpit, and I watched his lip begin to quiver, and I thought, what's wrong with him? And a big old tear popped out of his eye and ran down his face. It was clear as crystal. And he leaned over that pulpit, and he said, ladies and gentlemen, the good news of the gospel is Jesus took your hell. God sent his only begotten son to die on a cross and shed his blood. And God loves you. I'd never heard that in my life. I remember leaning over and grabbing Aunt Florine by the hand, facing 50 years in a state penitentiary. I said, Aunt Florine, if he knew where I'd been, if that man's known what all I've done, he wouldn't tell everybody that God loves them because he can't love me. And she said, Phil, that's why we wanted you to come. God loves you. Jesus died for you. God sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And at 15 minutes after eight, I didn't know I was supposed to wait till the end of the service. I didn't know. 15 minutes after eight, God the Holy Ghost got a hold of me and I realized who I was and who he was. And with my hair in a ponytail and 36 inch bell bottom blue jeans and four inch white platform shoes, I stood up in front of 300 people and stepped out of that pew. And when I started making my way to Jesus, God saved me before the first mossy back Baptist ever put their nasty hands on me. God had already recorded my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And at 15 minutes after eight, God reached down in a bad situation, applied his blood to a little dirty face hippie boy and saved me out of all of my sins. It's the best day of my life. It's the day I got born again. Now, I got saved at 15 minutes after eight. 13 of us got saved that night. They lined up all 13 of us across the front of the church. If you'd have took the whores, the dope addicts, and the murderers out of that crowd, there'd have been two left. 13 of us in one of the nastiest ghettos in this country stood in front of a church. I'll never forget I got saved at 15 minutes after eight. I didn't know nothing, nothing about God. I didn't know anything. But I remember getting up and wiping tears from my eyes and I looked and I looked across that building and people were going like this. I thought, well, I got to jump in with them. I didn't know why they were jumping, but I thought it looked right, so I got to jump in with them. By the way, I still jumped 42 years later. But let me tell you why they were jumping. That little old church we was in had a floor about like this one. Feels more like a trampoline than it does a floor. And that flooring weighed about 300 pounds. And she'd been praying for me every day for two years, once in the morning and once at night. When she saw me getting saved, she took off around that auditorium in a Baptist church, shouting and screaming. And she was so big, when her foot had hit the floor, everybody around her would bounce up like a trampoline. We got saved at 15 minutes after eight. We shouted till 10.30. 
walked two blocks home and remembered I drove a car. I had to go back and get my car. My pastor sitting on the hood with his arms folded. He said, I was wondering where in the name of God you went. I said, I don't know what all happened to me, but if you pour a little more on me, I'll just fly to the house and come get my car some other time. Hey, the best thing I've ever done, the best day of my life, I've never been sorry that I trusted his name and I got born again. So, so November 22nd, 1975, I got saved. Dad and I, if you come up in a heavy drinker's home, you'll understand, Dad and I had a lot of problems with our relationship. And to be honest, most of it was me. And uh, it was strange, when I got up to the altar that night, the first thing that happened to me was I fell in love with my daddy. And he was so drunk before I left that night. I remember getting in my car and going home and the closer I got to home, the more I, I was just in love with my dad. And I had to tell him that I loved him. I went home and Uncle Buford and Aunt Florine brought me a big family altar Bible. I meant to bring it tonight. Big old white family altar Bible. So here I go walking home with my hair in a ponytail, 36 inch bell bottom blue jeans, four inch plat white platform shoes and the biggest King James Bible you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> and I walk in the house, my mom said, what's wrong with you? I said, mom, I got saved. She said, go to bed, we'll talk about it in the morning. I said, I need to talk to my daddy. She said, he's in bed and he's drunk. I said, mama, I'm not going to bed till I talk to daddy. Now looking back on it, I didn't do it right. But you gotta understand, man, I just, got relieved of a lot of stuff. This is the first breath of fresh air I'd had in a long time. And Dad was in bed drunk and I didn't even turn the line on. I went running to the bedroom with that big Bible under my arm and I jumped up right in the middle of his bed and he spun around and he sat up. Mom come in and turned the light on and I was standing there with that Bible over my drunk dad. He said, son, that psychiatrist said it happened just like that. I said, Dad, he was right. He was right. At 15 minutes after eight tonight, God saved me. He changed me just like that. He changed me just like that. And guess what, Daddy? I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. And for 42 years, I've been a nobody telling everybody about a somebody that can save anybody. Much more I can say, but I want to close with this. Some of you may not understand why we're so happy. I understand that. Let me give you an illustration. I've preached 30 minutes. I, I get paid by the hour. That's all Brother Castle bought was 30 minutes. <laughs> if you guys will beef the offerings up next year, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> a friend of mine went to make a visit not long ago and he got out of his car and he's like me. He's not really a dog person. I'm not against dogs. I just, if you got one, take care of it but I believe all dogs are lost. I believe they all got demons in them. They all go to hell. That's why they're called hot dogs. And the only thing that's gonna beat your dog to hell is that nasty cat on your front porch. <laughs> oh, Lord. He said, I got out of the car and he said, this dog was on its hind legs out in the front yard and it was going like this. Then it would run around. The guy that owned the house said he'd just run around in circles till his tongue hung out that far. He said, I was afraid to get out of the car thinking there's something wrong with that dog. He said, I rolled my window down and said, sir, I'd like to talk to you, but I'm, I never seen a dog jump and spin that crazy like that. He said, oh, that's just because of what happened. He said, well, what happened? He said, well, he's just an old mutt. He said, we don't have no papers on him. He's just an old crossbreed mutt. There ain't nothing to him. He ain't worth nothing. And he said, our septic tank was full. We called the guy in to pump our septic tank. I like those guys. I saw a sticker on the back of one of them trucks the other day. It says, nobody puts their nose in our business. I like that. <laughs> and he moved the lid off that septic tank and put that hose, brand new truck, and got it half empty, and that pump went out on that brand new truck. He came out and told me, he said, my old truck runs fine, and 
He said, just let me go get my old tanker. We'll bring it up here and finish it, but be careful the lid's off that septic tank. He said, me and my father were standing out here and this old mutt dog was by my feet and he said, a squirrel went across the yard. And he said, whoa, boy, nope. But he said, you're wasting your time when a squirrel. He said, there went that dog. He said, he's a running wide open chasing that squirrel and he jumped over that ridge and saw the lid missing off that septic tank and in midair, he's trying to find reverse to back up. He said, me and my father was standing there and we heard a splash. He said, Dad and I walked over that septic tank about half full and he said, that dog's paddling in all that filth. And he said, while he's trying to stay above all that filth, he looked at me as if to say, don't you even care? He said, my father leaned over and said, now son, there's nothing to that dog. He ain't worth nothing. But if you love him, you're gonna have to go after him because he sure can't get out of the mess he's in. He said, preacher, I went and got a ladder and stuck it down in that filth. And I went down in that nasty septic tank to get that dog that wasn't worth a dime. Just a nasty dog. And he said, that dog was so messed up, when I'd reach out to get him, he'd fight me. He's just fighting everything. He said, but I just kept reaching out. Kept re and this, he said, finally, he just quit fighting. You can get out of the mess you're in if you'll just quit fighting. You'll just quit fighting. He said, when he quit fighting, I reached over and grabbed that nasty thing and pulled it to me. And I brought it up the ladder. And oh, it was nasty. And he said, I set it down in the yard and I took a water hose. And he said, I not only got it out of the pit, but I was gonna wash it from all that mess he is in. And he said, I took that water hose and sprayed all that filth off that dog. And he said, ever since I've cleaned him up, that's how he's been acting. Spinning around in circles, jumping around me and the father. He said, I don't know if he'll ever stop that. He said, preacher, don't you think... And he said, I looked at the preacher and he said, I stand in there crying. He said, preacher, what you crying about? He said, I'll tell you what I'm crying about. A long time ago, I was a nobody going down for the last time. And I ain't, they ain't much to me, but God said, Jesus, if you love him, you're gonna have to go down to where he's at because he sure can't get out of it on his own. And he said, God brought me out of a horrible pit, put my feet on a solid rock, put a new song in my mouth, even praises unto our God, wash me from all of my filth. You better believe I'm gonna jump. You better believe I'm gonna shout. You better believe I'm gonna turn around. The greatest day of my life was the day I got born again. You see, my life started with a pistol, but it ended with a bang. And the same God that saved me is the same God, son, that can save you. The Edwards family is coming. I'm done. I've preached 33 minutes. Thank you for your time. I'm finished. Thank you for being here. I need an invitation song quickly, and I'm leaving. And you guys were so respectful tonight. Thank you. Would you stand to your feet quietly and promise me you won't make any noise or move around? This will take just a minute, and I'm leaving. Just a moment, and I'll be done. So many great men of God here. Could I trust you men to pray for me right now? Could I trust you? Please, nobody talking. Please don't do that to me now. Please don't do that to me. I've preached my heart out trying to help you. Promise me you won't do that. I want you to do me a favor. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. I'm not coming to you. I'm not pointing at you. I'm not looking at you. I want to pray for you. You listen to me carefully, son, because what you do in the next couple of minutes may determine where you spend forever. And forever is a long, long time. While our heads are bowed, you're not going to lift your hand because of your buddy or your brother or sister or your husband or your wife. But if tonight while our heads are bowed, while nobody's looking, how many of you remember that day? I'm not talking about getting baptized, joining the church and starting to read your Bible. But you remember that day when you were forever lost and you got born again. And you're willing to die. Hey, you're willing to die in the shape you're in right now. I want you to lift your hand. I'm willing to die, preacher man. Thank you, you can put your hands down. Now, Brother Castle, you did look, and I want to thank you, but I'm not exaggerating now, preacher. I'm talking three to 400 people. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not talking about playing games here now. 
I drove down here with, with business on my mind. Listen to me, young people. Please listen to me. Promise me. You couldn't lift your hand. So I want you to do me a favor. If you're here right now and you could not lift your hand, I'm saying, I'm giving conservative estimate there was at least 300. And I want to thank you because 42 years ago, I couldn't lift mine either. So while every head's bowed, if you could not lift your hand, but you'd like for me to pray for you, that's all. I don't even want you to lift your hand. I just want you to look at me. I want you to look at me right now. Keep looking at me. And by you looking at me, you're saying, brother, kid, pray for me. I'm lost. I want Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, son. God bless you, men. God bless you, young ladies. All through this middle section, probably a hundred. There's at least a hundred people looking at me just through the middle section. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, son. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Over to my left, preacher, pray for me. Look at these beautiful young people. God bless you, honey. God bless you, young man. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Thank you. You can bow your heads again. Now, for those hundreds that looked at me, you were asking me to pray for you. And that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to ask you to do what I did 42 years ago. I'm going to ask you to step out of your seat and meet Phil Kidd right here. I want you to meet Phil Kidd right here. And by coming, you're saying, Preacher, I too want to receive that Jesus that saved you. After I pray, we're going to sing. Christians, I need, your, I need your heads bowed. I need you to seek God. There's 300 lost people here tonight. My God. Some of you moms and dads need to get each other by the hand and say, look, let's go get this thing settled with God. You said, preacher, you ought to see where I live, what I'm out of. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you, God loves you right where you're at, buddy. Father, I want to pray for these like I want them to pray for me. They're lost. And I beg you for every boy and girl, every mom and dad, sister, brother, son and daughter that looked at me. I pray you'd give them that strength to take that first step and meet me right here. And I promise you, I promise you we'll give you all the glory. Now while our heads are bowed, all over the building right now, would you promise me you won't put it off? If you looked at me and you wanted prayer, they're singing right now. How many of you will come join me? That's right, son. Come on, Tiny. They're coming. That's right. Come on. Get out of your seat. Come on. Sing it, brother. Here we go. Come on. They're coming right now. Just join me right here, brother. Stand right here. Come on. Here we go. Come on, brother. Here we go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. That's right. Let, let me get everybody up here, brother. Let me get everybody up here. Come on. They're coming from everywhere. That's right, honey. Come on. Come on. Let's go. As they sing, come on. Come on. From everywhere. Come on. Come on. Come on. They're coming from everywhere. Get out of your seat. Come on. Come on, you looked at me, son. You asked me to pray for you. Come on. They're coming from all over the building. Come on. Come on, that's right. Get out of your seat. They'll let you out. Come on, all of you gather around here with me. Come on. Look at all these people coming to get saved. Let's give them a hand while they're coming. Look at all these people coming to Jesus right now. Come on. Come on. Come on, keep coming, young people. Come on. Come on, son, keep coming. Come on, keep coming, keep coming. Come on. Come on, keep coming. Come on, preachers, help me pray. Come on, preachers. Look at all of them coming. Come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down, come on, come on, workers, help me, preachers, come help me get these people to God. Come on, they're still coming, they're still coming. Come on, preachers, come on, help me get these people to God. Brother Castle, help me out here. Come on, they're still coming. Soul winners, soul winners, soul winners, come, come on, they're everywhere. Soul winners, people everywhere, they're everywhere getting saved. Come on, come on, they're still coming. Come on, you looked at me. Preacher, pray for me. I prayed for you. Come on, get out of your seat right now. Don't put it off, son. Come on. Come on, while Jesus is calling. Come on, they're still coming. They're still coming. Come on. Take that step, honey. Come on, God will save you if you'll take that step. Come on, come on, do it right now. Come on. Let's give them a hand while they're still coming. Let's give them another hand while they're coming. Come on, they're still coming. They're still coming. Come on, honey, that's right. Come on. And oh, they're still coming. That's right, young man. Come on. Come on. They're still coming from everywhere. Come on. Come on. They're still coming. Come on. Come on. Call on God tonight. Call on God tonight. Come on. Come on. Come on. They're still coming. Come on tonight. Come on. Come on. Get them to Jesus tonight. 
tonight, church. Get under Jesus tonight. Get under Jesus tonight. Somebody talk to these girls right now. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, workers, I need you to clear the aisles. They're still coming. That's right, Mama. Come on, Mama, bring that baby. Come on down to this altar, Mama. Come on down. Hey, workers, give these people a chance to get to the altar. Come on. They're still coming from everywhere. Come on. Come on, come on. Let's give this Mama a hand. Coming down with her baby. Let's give her a hand. Don't you want this to be the night where you settle it with you and God? It started with a pistol. Come on, honey, we'll get you to Jesus right here. We'll get you to Jesus. They want to pray with you, brother. That's right. They're still coming. They're still coming. Come on. Come on, step out of that seat. Come on, I want you to meet me right here. Come on. Come on tonight. Come on. Are you coming? Come on. They're still coming. Come on, we'll make room. Come on. We gotta get some room at the altar, brother. We gotta get some room. They're overflooding the altar. Come on, come on. Somebody else gonna step out tonight? Come on, you looked at me. I prayed for you. Did you really mean it? Do you really want to settle this with Jesus tonight? I want to ask you to step out. Come on, I'll meet you.
They're still coming now. They're still coming. Well, it's been a long, long road. Anybody else want to get in while the waters are troubled tonight? Come on, Jesus will save you tonight. Hey, girls, pray for you right within me. Yes. There have been times of struggle. Just hold on, there's a brighter day. He never gave up. He never gave up. Come on, while he's dealing with your son. Oh, he reached out. Glory! Help yourself, daughter. Help yourself, daughter. Help yourself, daughter. Shout it out, glory to God. Hail at your boy. I've seen God do so much in this building tonight. People come a long way. Preacher, how long did it take you to get here tonight? Man, brother. Huh? I was talking a couple hours. And his boys got saved tonight. Both of his boys got saved. Go several hours. That's, that's two brothers hugging each other there. Both of them just, I said both of them just got born again. Great God in the morning. Hey, what a Savior. What a Savior. I just wonder. I just wonder. I just wonder if I sung one more verse. Was there one boy or girl that said, you know, I needed to go and I missed it. But if they'd sing one more verse, I'd come. Is that you? Preacher, if they'd sing one more verse, I'm the one that needs to step out of my chair. I'm the one that put it all. Why don't you get somebody next to you by the hand and say, look, I'm one of those that need to go to the altar. Would you come pray with me? I need to come. We're going to sing one more verse. If nobody comes, I'm done. Please, please, don't say no to God, honey. While we sing this verse just for you, come on, meet me Your here right now. Come on. Come on, if you need Jesus, and meet me here. Come on, honey. Come on, is there somebody else? That's right, son. Come on. That's right. Anybody else? Preacher, I should have moved. God spoke to my heart. I knew I should have come. I thought I missed it, brother kid. But I'm singing one more verse just for you. That's right, brother. Come on. Let's give him a hand while they're coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. He won't give up on you if you come. Come on. Come on. Jesus is ready. With open arms. If you pray with him, brother, they got what they needed. Yes. And I'm sure that you'll agree. He never once ever gave up on me. If you could see what he knocked before, then I'm sure that you'll agree. Never gave up on me. You know, I'm glad he didn't give up on me. I'm glad all them times when I was running up and down the road as a teenager, the Lord didn't give up on me. Tell it, Brother Castle. He didn't give up on me, and he hadn't give up on you. If he had, you'd have done been dead and gone. That's it, Brother Castle. He ain't give up on you. There's hope. There's hope for you tonight. There's hope for you tonight. He loves you. He loves you. You'll never be in a better atmosphere, you say, than what there is in here tonight. You're never going to be in no better atmosphere than what it is in here tonight. He's right. He's right. Hey. You better listen. Don't pass. Don't say I'm going to wait till next year. Don't say I'm going to go to church maybe next Sunday. Don't say, well, I'm going to wait a while. Do it tonight. Why you got a chance? Tell it, There's tell people it. dying every minute while we're standing up here, lost, just like me and him was, and they it. never get out. You never get out. You, never you burn out. and scream forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Come you on, never 
get out. Let me get you to Jesus. Come on. Sun's up here still praying. Come on, you come. come on. Sing one more verse. Come one on. more. Christians, don't you get weary. Yeah, that's right. Don't you get weary. There's nothing you got to do more important than what yeah, God's doing in here tonight. Me. Let God speak to you tonight. You come. Come on. Come, come on. on, children. Come on. I'll pray on. with you. Come on. Come on. Get come out of your seat. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Just get out of your seat. Young lady. Come on. Come on. Teenager. Come on. Let's go. Let's Move go. right now. Move right now. Let yeah, God help you right now. Come on. Let God help you right now. Come on. Right now. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I tell you what I want to do. Chill late, late with me just for a minute. While well, we still got some in the oven. That's right. God's working on. Yes. If you got saved listen, here tonight. Listen, come on. If you got saved here tonight, Talk you about got right Jesus now. to be your Savior tonight. Yeah. You got it settled. You got it settled tonight. I want you to come back up here and get right here and we're going to pray for you. And then we're going to let come you Come on, I want to stand come on. with you. Come on. Come on, I'm right now. All of you, come on, right come now. Come on, come on. Everybody. Stand right down here. Let's go. Come on, let's you go. You got it saved tonight. Come everybody, on, back come up on. here. Get out of your One seat. Come on. come on, I want a picture with everybody. Yeah, come on. I want to get my picture with all of you. Come Amen. on. Let's go. Everybody you got, got saved, saved here tonight. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, come, on. come on. If you got saved tonight, come on. Come on, right now. Everybody, come on. Get back up here. We're going to take your picture. Come on, come on. Amen. Hallelujah. They're coming in the choir. Come on, let's get up here. Everybody hey, got saved. You got saved, you're not. Send them up here, let's brother. Give them a hand while Where's yours man? at? Aren't you glad that they got Come saved on. tonight? Get them up here, brother. Come on, you got saved tonight. Come on, we're going to pray for you. Come on. We're going to pray for you tonight. Come on, everybody got saved. Hey, Come on, brother. Whoa. Come on, brother. Look at all this, man. Is this Come on, we're Come on, y'all. Come on, get up here. We're going to pray for you. Yes, Jesus. We're yes. going to pray for you before you go. Yes. You got saved here tonight. Come on, more of you. Let's go. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Come up here. Come up here right now. Come on. Come on, I want to pray with you. Come on. Here comes some more, preacher. Here Amen. Let's more. go, y'all. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on, brother. You boys, come up here. Amen. Come up here. Yes. Come on. If you got saved, come up here tonight. Yes. Uh, come on, if you got Lord, saved, I know there's probably here. at least 50. Come on, bring them up here. Let's go. Come on up here, brother. Come on up here. Everybody that got saved. Come hey, on. man, come on, y'all. Bring hey, all these up here. Come on, come on. All them, come on, on I'm glad you got saved, boy. I wish I'd have got saved when I was your age. Yeah. Oh, dear God. Come on, brother, let God. You know, I've heard people say, oh, oh them brother. little kids don't know what they're doing. Glad you got Look saved, at that young brother. man right there. They prayed with that many Isn't that something? Welcome, Isn't that something, y'all? That's, that's what youth rally's for right there. Yeah! That's what youth rally's for right there. That's a man we've been looking for right there. You've been praying hey. for him? Yeah, he got saved tonight, brother. What's your name? Amen, brother. Amen. Okay. Huh? Amen. Just stay here, brother. We want to get a picture with him. Everybody got it? You ready? There's All some right. more over here still praying. All right. Here comes some more. Come on. Let's There's been over more. 40. Got them. That's 40. Okay. That's every one of you get a new Bible tonight. Amen. Hey, We're going to give every one of them a new Bible. Hey, Amen. Thank you, brother. Brother. Let's give Chad a hand, man. Thank you. Hey, Let's man. give him a hand for that donation. We appreciate that. Let's get a picture, brother. He's the one that's got that crazy... Did y'all see that crazy bus out there? Everybody see that crazy bus out oh, there? Oh, man. That guy got some guts, ain't he? You drive you know that through Washington, D.C. So you know where I was at. You get a drive-by you real quick. Been, right? He's going to give them all a brand new Bible. How old are you, brother? Hey, there's some people in here got some guts, man. Preach on the subways in New York City. On the subways, y'all. Lord have mercy. You got to survive. Amen. Brother Danny. Yes, sir. This boy's 32 years old. He's been a gang member, been shot, raised hell, dope addict, mean as a snake. And he said, Preacher, your life was so much like mine. He said, I've been shot, been stabbed. I've been shot, cut, stabbed, 
hit by five cars, school bus, paralyzed twice, pronounced dead three times, life Long support twice, 12 years old, I was, a, I was a crip gang member, selling drugs, doing drugs, drinking, partying, smoking, Are you listening? chilling, this is my kind of people, man. in and out of prison, in and out of jails. But tonight you got saved. But tonight, man, I'm free, man. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Amen. That's good stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Holy mercy. You know, you never gave up on you, buddy. Been pronounced dead two or three times. I'm proud of you, girls. <laughs> Take my hand. Hey, it's, this is what youth rally is all about. Yeah, if you're glad you're saved, say amen. Hey, hey, for all you people that don't like this hollering and screaming, don't you ever go to a basketball game. You don't want to be no hypocrite. Don't go to football games. Don't go to a race. You don't like hypocrites. Here's five more. Uh-oh, here's a bunch more. We're pushing... We're going to be pushing 50. Pushing 50 people. Yeah, yeah. God save right tonight. Time, counting last night and these still praying. We're pushing 50. Wow. Now look, I know some of you have got to go. We're going to wind this up. Listen to me. We're going to pray for these kids. Yes. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, I'm going to preach on wow. three things that will get a teenager out of God's will oh. and neither one of them is a sin. Oh, listen to that now. Listen to me. Uh-huh. The devil's smart. He, oh, yeah. he, got, he ain't gonna say, hey, won't you go get drunk. That's He'll right. use something that ain't wrong right. to get you out. Yep. So hey, everybody be here. Three things that'll Brother, get a teenager out of the will of God and none of them's a hey, sin. Buddy. Chris Little, I want you to come up here I'm with Brother so Chris and I'm gonna pray. And Brother Kid, I got one announcement and I'm out of here. He's gonna have a table set up over here and I'm gonna let him tell you about that. Please don't get in a hurry. Brother. We're gonna pray for these kids. Look, do you see them signs over there? Make sure you get one of them big signs and put them in your yard, unless you're ashamed of Jesus. If you're ashamed, don't do it. And get a bumper sticker, get the T-shirts. And he's got all kind of stuff over here. Brother Chris is a pastor, Amen, Unity Chris. Baptist Church down in Shelby, you, North Carolina. They do a great job. We're gonna be Amen. down there in revival God in about you. how many weeks, Chris? May 21st is going to be down in revival at his church. Praise the Lord. But we have people get saved every year, every year. And I love Brother Chris. All right, hold it, y'all. Everybody give me attention. One more announcement. Come on, preacher. Who's going to pray for him? He's going to pray. You want him to pray first? Yeah, okay. let him pray first. He's going to pray first. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. Yes, Brother Chris. We want to thank you so much for your mercy. Thank Woo! you for your grace. Boy! Father, we thank you that you're in the saving business. <laughs> Father, we thank you that you saved. Hey, yeah, listen to me now. Father, we want to thank you for now what you've talking, done here tonight. Brother. Father, I ask that Give your you hands be upon each and every one of these Please, Holy young Ghost. people tonight. Oh, Father, I pray that you'll just touch them. Oh, them God, God, oh, use God. Them. God, use them for the glory and honor yes, of God. Father, every one of them, Father, I, I pray. pray your blessings on this meeting. God, I pray that you'll bless Tomorrow morning. Yes. Oh, Father, I pray that you'll help us just to keep going. Keep on keeping on. That's right, preacher man. Father, we thank you and praise you for all you do. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Would you be seated for just a moment? Everybody be seated. Everybody be seated. Y'all can go sit down. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Everybody sit down just a minute. I want to give an announcement. We'll be leaving. Important announcement. Yeah. Praise the Lord, man. I'm proud of you, buddy. I want everybody to look this way while they're going down. I wasn't joking with you. I am a mixed martial arts teacher. And June 25th through the 29th, I have a mixed martial arts camp up in the Tri-Cities area in the Tri-City area in Tennessee. I've got some brochures over here. We are limited. We take boys and girls. We're not teaching your kids how to be a fighter, but we are teaching them how to take care of themselves. One out of every five boys are bullied in school. Over 20% of the girls are harassed and touched inappropriately in school. When I get done with your kids for a week, nobody will ever put their hand on your son or daughter again. Brother, Brother Cody Zorn will be there doing the preaching every night. I'll be preaching some in the morning as well as others. It's from ages 13 and up. If you're interested in the camp, 
My brochures are over here. I'm going to take you to a mixed martial arts gym. I'm going to fight during that week as well. You'll see me in the octagon fighting. And uh, we've got nothing less than black belt trainers. And because you young people were so kind and respectful to me tonight, um, if you want me to show you how to knock somebody out and hurt them in seven seconds, when we're done, just come up on the platform. And where are you at, Leo? Malik, where are you at? Did he leave? Somebody go get that punk right now. He Last, somebody said he's hitchhiking down the road. Malik, let, well, we'll find somebody. And I'm just going to show you how to take care of yourself. You won't even break a sweat. And you'll break their nose, their elbow, their shoulder, their two floating ribs, their jaw, and their ankle. It'll take about seven seconds. So I'll show you that when we get done. But if you are interested in sending your kid to camp, uh, we have services morning and night. We serve three hot meals a day, the best food money can buy. I promise you, I'm not just saying it, it's one of the best camps in America. And if you're interested in it, get one of my brochures. There's still plenty of time to sign up. If you enjoyed my testimony, it started with a pistol and ended with a bang. I have it on DVD. 33 pictures of my past life. This is the only picture of me before I got saved. My hair's in a ponytail. I got on a red velvet coat with a sawed off shotgun down it. And you'll see a picture of Phil Kidd before he got saved. I'll take you to the alley where Angel took the bullet and died in front of me. I stand right where she got shot. I'll take you to the alleys where I sold drugs, where I got stabbed. Then I'll take you to the church where I got saved. All of that, all of that is on this DVD. And then if you want to hear the unshackled version, they've had more people saved off my testimony on unshackled on radio than any they've done in their history. We just translated it in Arabic a couple of years ago and sent it to every Muslim country in the world. So I have it on CD, The Unshackled, plus my bodyguard, T-Bone. He was my bodyguard for almost two years. I led him to Christ in October, and he was shot and killed, uh, shot and died as a result of it the next April. But I interview him and my aunt that prayed for me. She's in heaven now. I interview them on this CD. I've only got about five copies of that, and I'm sorry. Then for everybody 16 and older, if you're not married, 16 and older, I want to give you a free book. It's called Courtship and Marriage, Fairground Relationships. How to find the right person that's going to screw you up the rest of your life. <laughs> now, there's something in this book that's going to make you mad. I promise you. I sold one to a blind man and he got mad. So I know there's something in this book that's going to tick you off. But it just gives you some things to look for when you think about getting married. Think about it. If you're dating a boy and the seat of his britches look like a family of midgets just moved out of it and he lives in his dad's basement and he's never had a job and he's 29 years old and all he has to his name is an Xbox, he is a loser. Get away from him. He is a loser. If you're dating a girl and she thinks a vacuum cleaner is a Martian from another world, she's never done a dish, she doesn't know how to sew or cook, get away from her. You'll leave on TV dinners the rest of your life You'll have rats big as house cats. Roaches will carry your kids away. You'll eat off paper plates the rest of your life. She'll lay on the couch and eat Krispy Kreme donuts. She'll weigh 450 pounds on your first anniversary. Get away from her. She's a loser. I've got something in this book that'll make you mad, I promise. So if you're 16 and over and you're not married, but you want some biblical guidelines on how to find the right person for your life, uh, you feel free to go by and I'm going to give you a copy of that book free of charge just for being here tonight. Look, many of you I met for the first time. I fell in love with you. Would you adopt me and keep me? I love being here. Brother Castle, thank you for letting me come. Let's give this great man of God a hand. Got a burn for all these young people, man. Thank you so much. Love you, preacher man. All right, one more thing. I need a little help. We got a girl here. Raise your hand there, Jessica. We got 15 kids that ain't got no way to get home. If there's a group, we got a bus tore up. We had problems with another bus tonight. Uh, if there's a group, if your group's gonna stay here and eat, y'all, I told her to tell them they'd be home early. That's the only way they got to bring them. So she needs somebody with a van that would run them home. Soon as we get out of here, like right now, go get on that van, follow her, and get them kids home while your group stays up here and eat. Is there somebody that could do that? 14 of them. Somebody would be willing to do that for us. I know some of you got to go, and I understand that. Anybody? We need a van, y'all. Unless we put 14 kids in the back of a truck. You got one? 
Oh, y'all got, while, the, while y'all are eating, could they do that? Where you at, Mike? Brother Michael? They introduced, they volunteered your van from Midview Baptist down in Kings Mountain. So go get them. All y'all that I'll come with right Jessica, back. y'all go get with her right now. You've already eat. You don't get nothing to eat now. And I need some of you to have a straighten up in here. There's plenty of food up here for everybody. There's funnel cakes. There's cotton. Good. No, they ain't cotton candy. But there's hamburgers and hot dogs. Go get it. Do not go to a restaurant. We spent $1,200 on food. That's right. So go up there and eat it. Get it? Get it, okay? Preacher, right. tell them my table's over here. But the kids' table's right over right here. Over here to the right left. over here. It's just stuff. God bless you. Go home. Get all Amen. your kids. We don't want them either. Amen.